the red planet. Although many people assume it to be the closest planet to our own, it is in fact Venus which comes closer to the Earth during its orbit around our star. Mercury is the closest planet not only to Earth, but to every other planet in the solar system at one time or another. Yet these giants barren landscapes incapable of supporting life. This reality is partly why Mars is so often the focus of man's attention in regard to our solar system's planetary bodies. With a partial atmosphere, and thanks to the Mars rovers, proven to possess water, it is a far less violent planet, not scorched like Mercury or filled with toxins like Venus. As such, for many years now, as the human population has exploded and modern technology has made self-sustaining, isolated life-supporting systems a reality, the search for suitable places for future colonization of the solar system has become a more and more popular subject of study. One of the most important additional factors for possible candidates for this exploration of space is the planet's distance from the Sun, nicknamed the Goldilocks Zone. Just like porridge being just right, Mars is located within a specific distance from the Sun capable of sustaining life. And although space agencies and other fields of funded institutions staunchly deny the possibility of it once having been inhabited, possibly even by man himself, dismissing such ideas as preposterous, Mars's desolate red oxide landscape is in fact uncannily similar to Earth's possible future appearance if humans were to continue unsustainable activities or a cataclysmic event were to occur. Thus, is it so preposterous to ponder the possibility that the planet we see before us today was in fact transformed into its lifeless form by an event or possibly past insatiable appetites for its resources by an ancient civilization which once called it home. Could the Cambrian explosion, the sudden appearance of advanced life on our planet, be evidence of terraforming? Could there have also been a similar, yet now hidden, mammalian explosion, indicating our own sudden arrival here on Earth after it artificially became capable of sustaining us? An orchestrated introduction of a complex food chain by ancient man who were in reality Martians. We have in the past covered some very strange occurrences on Mars, one in particular suggesting that possible black operations to colonize the Red Planet are already underway. The Mars rovers were given an expected lifespan of just 90 days. This estimation was based upon the notorious dust storms which choke its surface. Yet spirit lasted an incredible seven years surviving until 2010, and Opportunity only recently ceased operation. This remarkable longevity, solely a result of what has become known as cleaning events, which for 14 years were repeatedly experienced and documented. Yet what is most curious regarding these events is that they always occurred while the rovers were offline. In July 2007, during the fourth mission extension, Severe Martian dust storms block sunlight to the rovers and threaten the ability of the craft's survival. However, when the dust storms lifted and the rovers came back online, something had cleaned them of nearly all debris. On May 1, 2009, during its fifth mission extension, Spirit became stuck in the soft soils of Mars. Strangely, it seems, because the rover was not moving, it missed subsequent cleaning events. Did our mysterious helper assume it had died? Join us in our next video, which will be an expose of artifacts, features, ancient testimonies and satellite anomalies, and many other factors which support the conspiracy of secret Martian inhabitation, supporting the hypothesis of an ancient Martian civilization that once called our red neighbor home. Evidential arguments we find highly compelling. Most people have never heard of pareidolia, but nearly everyone has experienced it. Anyone who has looked at the moon and spotted two eyes, a nose, and a mouth has felt the pull of pareidolia. It's the imagined perception of a pattern or meaning where it does not actually exist, according to the World English Dictionary. 
It's picking a face out of a knotted tree trunk or finding zoo animals in the clouds. German design studio Onformative is undertaking perhaps the world's largest and most systematic search for Pareidolia. Their Google Faces program will spend the next few months sniffing out face-like shapes in Google Maps. This phenomena of seeing faces was also attributed to the very famous face of Cydonia that was found on Mars. The face was first imaged in detail by the Viking 1 and Viking 2 orbiters. 18 images were taken by the orbiters. Viking 1 launched on July 20, 1976 and Viking 2 orbited Mars on July 25, 1978. The striking likeness the apparent natural formation had to a face allowed the image to quickly gain notoriety around the world. The possibility of ancient ruins being on Mars is not a hypothesis held by modern science. And it is certainly not a scenario that NASA endorses. Neither does any other space-going nation appear to have any interest in investigating the possibility. Many conspiracies have surfaced over the years regarding covert operations in search of exactly such ruins on our neighboring planets. Many claiming black operations have occurred, such as an Apollo 20 program, with some rather convincing CGI hoaxes subsequently being created. Regardless, what a number of authentic researchers have managed to accomplish by just studying imagery of Mars and also of historical knowledge of the region held here on Earth is quite remarkable. Subsequent orbital imagery of the Cydonia region of Mars have attempted to debunk the face as just being a product of light angle. However, thankfully, people did not let these debunking efforts dissuade them from further investigations of the area. Some researchers who were versed in the works of Zachariah Sitchin connected the location to the possible burial site a king. Recorded within the 10th Sumerian tablet, Sitchin had apparently translated a passage regarding a god known as Alalu who requested upon death to be buried where he would be able to peer into space gazing upon Earth forever. Although many claim Sitchin's vague understanding of the writings may have led to mistranslations, Sitchin became convinced that this tenth tablet also laid claim to the king being the constructor of the pyramids. People who knew these fragments of information actually connected a network of apparent extremely ancient pyramidal ruins resting very near to the face. These remnants of once great structures undoubtedly align with the star constellation of Pleiades. What is astonishing is that these ruins would not have been discovered without Sitchin's translations. Was Sitchin right all along? Is this really proof of ancient ruins on our nearest neighbor? The alignments are certainly compelling and must be more than just coincidence. As always, thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Now I'd like to go on to the next graphic and let's linger on this one a moment because this is worth looking at. This is a very strange pair of images. These are two images. They were taken 12 days apart and this just happened. I mean, this is going on right now. This is where Opportunity is currently parked. And you can see 12 days apart, a rock just simply appeared. On January 8th, 2014, a strange Mars rock was spotted by Opportunity resting in a spot where earlier there was nothing but soil. The rock, which scientists now call Pinnacle Island, is in the shape of a donut, white on the outside, red in the middle. It appeared after Opportunity had just finished a short drive. It looks like a jelly donut, said Steve Squires, the rover's lead scientist at Cornell University in Ithaca during a recent NASA event, marking Opportunity's 10th year on Mars. It appeared. It just plain appeared at that spot, and we haven't driven over that spot. Strangely, NASA has remained pretty silent in regards to the details of the find for the past few years, 
only recently coming forward to claim they had solved the mystery of its sudden appearance, claiming the rover had indeed disturbed the rock somehow. The odd rock is located in a spot on Murray Ridge, along the wall of Endeavor Crater where Opportunity spent the Martian winter. A closer look at the rock using Opportunity's robotic arm-mounted instruments has revealed, quote, it's like nothing we ever seen before. It's very high in sulfur, very high in magnesium. It has twice as much manganese than anything we've seen on Mars, said Squires with excitement during an event in January. I don't know what any of this means. We're completely confused, but we're having a wonderful time, he stated. Squires said rover scientists have two working theories on how the Pinnacle Island rock mysteriously appeared near Opportunity. One suggests that the rock is a piece of debris from a meteorite impact somewhere near the rover that just so happened to land in front of Opportunity, while the other theory is that the rock was somehow kicked up by one of rover's six wheels during its recent drive. This is regardless of Squires' original comment regarding the rover not having previously traversing that particular area. Did something actually throw this very interesting and possibly extremely important rock in the rover's direction? We already have the rover's mysterious cleaning events, which have occurred on many occasions. With every strange event that occurs on Mars, the possibility of outside help from an intelligent entity becomes less absurd. Did an alien or possibly covert astronauts throw us a bone in the form of a stone? We may never know where the rock came from, but we should all be thankful the rover found it. Squires said the weird Mars rock is an example of how the red planet keeps surprising scientists even 10 years later. He finished by saying, quote, Mars keeps throwing new things at us. As always, thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care. There are many unique ancient megastructures that can be found all over the world, with Japan being no exception. However, interestingly, some of these extremely ancient earthworks cannot be found anywhere else on Earth. Known as a Kufan, these unique yet highly recognizable shaped earthworks, translated as meaning ancient mound tomb or ancient grave in Japanese, we feel could quite possibly also be found upon Mars. Not only could, but may have already been located and identified. Of course, without actually visiting the planet, we cannot confirm this beyond doubt. Yet the similarities between these two locations is unquestionably compelling. The best known Kofun within Japan is known as the Dyson Kofun, approximately 500 meters long and 300 meters across at its widest point. It is an enormous ancient structure, with the entire tomb perimeter measuring in at 840 meters long. Enclosed by three moats, the mound rises approximately 35 meters above the surrounding terrain. The inner moat is the widest at approximately 60 meters, with the entire mound being approximately 100,000 square meters in area, and the entire tomb some 460,000 square meters. Today, the tomb is off-limits, protected by the Imperial Household Agency in the center of Sakai City. The moats are maintained and provide a sanctuary for fish and water birds. Although, conveniently, the mound itself has been left completely overgrown by vegetation, this regardless of the risk of deterioration by the roots of trees, along with the additional point of them being tourist attractions, one has to wonder whether this deliberate choice to leave them completely obscured by trees is actually an attempt to conceal their shape from the rest of the world. Why leave such clearly important ancient structures engulfed in trees, with root systems left to flourish that are notorious for destroying ancient structures? Why make such a decision if they were not indeed attempting to conceal these enigmatic earthworks? We strongly suspect, although with only circumstantial evidence of course, that a lost civilization, possibly a mother civilization of Earth, will one day be confirmed upon Mars. It continues to be a puzzling question as to why some of the most ancient ruins on Earth are also seemingly the most advanced. Is this fact suggestive of intercontinental travel? Possibly are highly advanced ancient ancestors having built such awe-inspiring structures upon their arrival to our planet after traveling here from Mars? 
could there possibly be ancient Kofuns, and indeed other ancient structures and tombs, still left upon the Red Planet, waiting to be rediscovered, waiting to inform our modern civilization of another chunk of human history? Why are these enigmatic, iconic ancient Kofuns only found within Japan? Why does this anomaly on Mars look exactly like one? Why do the Japanese continue to conceal the Kofun's true shape beneath dense tree lines? We find all of these suspicious factors highly compelling. We often cover the extraordinary yet unexplained ruins that can be found all over our planet. However, as many of these ancient sites indicate, our ancient lost ancestors clearly had substantial advanced understandings we are yet to unravel. We feel, it is clear, that they were indeed technologically superior to us, the modern man. Thus, the question we must ask, just as we are, was this clearly advanced civilization capable of space travel? If so, then why did they not survive the mass exodus, which many feel befell the rest of these lost civilizations? Many people throughout history have been extremely interested in the concept of inhabiting other planets. In many ways, the habitation of other space bodies is a sound strategical contingency for species survival. For in a world at the mercy of other space bodies hurtling through the cosmos, not putting all of one's eggs in one basket will always be a great survival technique, giving the species twice the chance of survival. Mars, our nearest neighbor, has been the subject of countless theories involving past civilization, ancient or human, and the focus of NASA's most expensive space exploration missions spending vast sums in the pursuit of several successful touchdown, and indeed, as mentioned, for a good reason. And just like the many ancient, advanced, unexplained features upon our planet, any past inhabitation, no matter how primitive, would not only be ignored, but logically, much more easily suppressed than the finds we share, which can be explored by us here on Earth. For exactly the same motives as ruins on Earth are ignored, any ancient civilization that could be found upon Mars would meet the same fate. For the proof of ancient civilization, predating that which academia has condemned themselves to dating and explaining as our more primitive modern ancestors' work, has to be suppressed. Academia must protect public confidence for the protection of current, profitable theory. Was Mars once inhabited? Was it inhabited by us? Perhaps the most worrying question surrounding all of this, with academia so hell-bent on appearing correct, will we, as a species, ever find out? In our last video, we discussed the possibility of there being a secret colony on Mars, a colony made possible by modern technologies advances in sustainable agriculture and life-supporting artificial ecosystems, an apparent astronaut silhouette caught during one of the rover's unexplained cleaning events, and the resources such as water found upon the surface, making it an ideal candidate for such a mission. With running rivers, oceans, even possibly a thriving ecosystem, did we once call Mars home? If we did indeed once call Mars home, there would be undoubtedly ruins on its surface. Rare, surviving features that would still litter the landscape, and over the years, countless possible examples of these have been spotted. And although many of these could be dismissed as mere cases of pareidolia, others are just too perfect, too precise in their appearance to simply be dismissed. Possible ancient relics of a lost Martian civilization. Ancient sarcophagi, heads of statues, pyramidal structures discovered to match star constellations in their layout, most notably that of a Pleiades constellation, located near the famous face on Mars, an enormous face often argued as having been nothing more than a trickery of light, this regardless of ancient texts, linking the face, the pyramids, and the constellational alignment to the burial requests of a supposed ancient Anunnaki king. 
Phobos is yet another curious anomaly of Mars, known to be in a continually decaying orbit. There are many features of this satellite which baffle astronomers and researchers alike. For example, when one calculates its orbit, they are shocked to find that this orbiting rock should have crashed into the Martian landscape many, many years ago. What's more, satellite imagery of its surface has captured images of a very mysterious anomaly on a number of occasions. A cuboid monolithic object with no impact crater resting upon its surface. Buzz Aldrin has even mentioned this anomaly, specifically calling it a monolith, also noting that he believed, quote, God put it there. Is Phobos's enigmatic orbit deliberate? A past attempt to draw our attention to it, subsequently discovering this monolith? Could it possibly hold undeniable proof of not only other life in the universe, but the past habitation of Mars itself? It is undoubtedly highly compelling. Habitation on the moon. We can visit other people with their habitation. We can keep track. If there's something very important to be developed from the moon, I'm not sure what it is right now. And I sure think we should identify what it is for America to make such gross expenditures again for human habitation on the moon. We can help. We can join with. Together, we can explore the moon and develop the moon. We should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by to comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? Who put that there?